Good evening, East Alabama. Welcome into the locker room presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. I'm Nameth Pitts. We start a new week, and it is going to be a slam-packed week. We're going to have a lot of great stuff for you guys this week. Today, we are going to have highlights from the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament from this past weekend. We're going to have the results. We're going to talk about a couple other local stories. Tomorrow, we're going to have my East Alabama, um, well, not just East Alabama, but State of Alabama Class 1A through 4A wrestling rankings as we get into sectionals, which is a week away. We're going to talk about, we're going to have more wrestling highlights as the week progresses on Wednesday and Thursday. Welburn hosting an in-school uh, duel tomorrow. Alexandria hosting Oxford tomorrow night. So we're going to have a lot of wrestling action. And then come Friday, we are going to look ahead at the area basketball tournaments and whatnot that are to come. And then next week, guys, we are going to have an interview each day with at least four different East Alabama coaches previewing the sectional tournament, previewing those teams. And then we're going to talk with some coaches outside of this area that coach some top teams in the state of Alabama, previewing their programs as well. So it is going to be a busy two weeks as we get closer and closer to the sectional wrestling tournament that's next week. And then two weeks from now, I will be in studio the beginning of the week, but at the end of the week, I will be in Huntsville at the Von Braun Center covering the state wrestling tournament because we know we're going to have some local champions right here in East Alabama. There's not a question about that. Hey, again, I want to remind you, I do it every Every single time we're here every single Monday through Friday afternoon on the locker room. But if you have not already, hit that like and follow button. There are two different buttons. Hit both. Like obviously means you like our page. Follow means our stuff pops up at the top of your page. You can even turn on the notification pushes where you get push notifications each time we make a post. And it keeps you guys up to speed on everything that's happening here with the locker room and our sports, but also keeps you up to date on local news like yesterday in Aniston when the Walmart shooting happened. You see stuff like that that automatically pops up on our East Alabama Now page. And so the best way to not miss any of that is to press that like and follow button. But it's not just East Alabama Now as well, guys. It's EAN News, which is soon to merge into East Alabama Now. But for now, John Holder still has your weather every night at 6.30 p.m. on EAN News. Mike Stedham and Katie Edwards still bring you your local news, and I have your local sports. Today, we're going to look at the games for East Alabama tonight in basketball, and we're going to recap the uh, recap Dora who took home first place this past weekend at Piedmont speaking of we're going to talk a little bit more about the Piedmont dogfight invitational this segment I'm just going to give you guys kind of the results of what happened in each weight class give you the results of what happened team wise and then the next segment we're actually going to have highlights from Friday night when I was out at Piedmont covering the Piedmont dogfight wrestling tournament speaking of Dora Dora was first place this past weekend at the Piedmont dogfight Wrestling tournament, they took first place with 166 and a half points. Second place was the Weaver Bearcats, who scored 144 points. Coach Andy Fulmer's team was missing five starters this past weekend that didn't wrestle, but they still finished second place. That shows you how strong this Bearcat team is to still finish in second place when you have five starters that are not in the lineup. Ramburn took play, took third place with 124 points. New Hope took fourth place with 123 points. Montgomery Catholic was fifth with 105, uh, 112 and a half points sixth place was Prattville Christian Academy with 112 points Welburn was in uh, Cleveland County was in seventh place with 95 points Welburn was in eighth with 90 and a half Piedmont was behind Welburn with 87 Cherokee County after them with 80 Deschler had 69 and a half Madison County had 62 and a half White Plains had 53 West End had 26 and Sachs was at the bottom with 14 points that was the team results from this past weekend at the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament. But now the individual results in the 108-pound weight class. Carter Driver defeated Noah Smith by pin as Carter Driver got third place and Noah Smith of Welburn got fourth place. Carter Driver wrestles for Ramber, Noah Smith wrestles for Welburn. And then in the championship match for the 108-pound weight class, Miles Bailey of Piedmont Penn, Jackson, Jeffries of Deschler. So first place was Miles Bailey of Piedmont. Second place was Jackson, Jeffries of Deschler. Third place was Carter Driver of Ramburn. And fourth place was Noah Smith of Walter Welburn. In the 115-pound weight class, it was Hunter Holsey of, R of Ramburn who pinned Carter Anderson of Montgomery Catholic. And then Peyton Andrews pinned Cameron Sharp of New Hope. So Peyton Andrews of Weaver was first place. Cameron Sharp of New Hope was second. Hunter Holsey of Ramburn was third. And Carter Anderson of Montgomery Catholic was fourth. 
The 122 pound weight class, Christian Beckwith of New Hope won by a decision, 18 to 6 decision, 18 to 16 decision over Brayson Howard of West End. That was a high scoring match, 18 to 16 final decision. Mason Hom of White Plains got first place as he won by decision, 8 to 2 over Andrew. I'm going to probably pronounce this name wrong, but Andrew. Yep, he's from Montgomery Catholic. I'm not even going to try because <laughs> I'm going to mess it up. But Mason Hom got first place from White Plains. Andrew of Montgomery Catholic Prep School got second. Christian Beckwith of New Hope got third. And Brayson Howard of West End got fourth. At 128, Jaden Rouse of Dora got first place. Major decisioning, Andrew Waugh of New Hope 22-11. to Dalton Fink won by pin over Lyric Brown as Dalton Fink got third. And Lyric Brown of White Plains got fourth place. In the 134-pound weight class, Curtis Souls of Cherokee County got first place. He won by a decision over Bryson Pugh of Prattville Christian Academy. The decision was 12 to 7. And then Jacoby Foster of Dora won by medical forfeit over Isaac Bailey of Piedmont. In the 140 pound weight class, James Andrew Ingalls won by decision over Andrew Cox of Madison County. The score was 12 to 11 decision. And then in third place, Braden Driver won over Xander Wilson of Welburn. 7 to 0 decision as Braden Driver of Ramard got third place and Xander Wilson of Welburn got fourth place. In the 146-pound weight class, Austin Mayfield of Cleburne County won by a pin over Brody Pugh of Prattville Christian Academy. And then Noah Screws won by decision over Gianluca Torres of Weaver as Noah Screws won by a 7-6 to six decision to get third place. At the 152-pound weight class, Andrew Young of Cherokee County won by pin over Matthew Post of Prattville Christian Academy. And then Deshaun Kirby Barnes of Weaver won by decision over Kayla Pryor of Dora 2-1 as Deshaun Kirby Barnes of Weaver got third place. In the 159-pound weight class, David Herrick of Cherokee County won by decision over Caleb Tidwell of Piedmont by a score of 9-3. to three. And then Spencer Perkins of Prattville Christian Academy won by decision 5-1 to one over Colton Mayfield of Cleburne County. At 167, John Hart of Dora won by decision 6-3 to three over Dylan Murdaugh of Walter Welburn. And then Curtis Daniel won by pin over Harrison Roberts of Cleburne County. In the 177-pound weight class, it was Leighton Pohl of New Hope who won by pin over Zach Buchanan of Ramburn. And then Aiden Richardson of Dora won by pin over Hunter Abercrombie of West End. The 192-pound weight class, Ross Mills of Dashler won by decision 3-2 to two over Cameron Richardson of Dora. And then Charles Chappelle of uh, Montgomery Catholic won by decision sudden victory over Zachary Hooks of Weaver 6-4. 217 pound weight class, Brandon Joff won by decision 8 to 4 over Corian Pryor of Dora. And then Will Johnson of Cleburne County won by medical forfeit over Stephen Walls of New Hope. Then at the heavyweight division 287, Keyshawn Pryor of Dora won by decision over Aiden Cockrell of Prattville Christian Academy 4 to 2. And then Zayden Benefield of Ramburn won by decision 2 to 1 over Andrew Salter. And they went all the way through overtime, double overtime, into the very end, as it would be Zayden Benefield getting the escape, I'm assuming, or either holding down Andrew Salter to get the win, two to one decision. So that is all the results from the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament from this weekend. And when we come back in just a minute, we are going to have more from the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament, as we're going to have highlights presented by Lindsey Barger of Really Real Real Estate. So do not go away. I'm Namath Pitts, and you're watching The Locker Room, presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. Ted's Floors and Beyond is excited to introduce our all-new outdoor living collection. Have you ever dreamed of elevating or even creating an outdoor living space, whether it be for grilling, lounging, playing, entertaining, or just winding down? Our quality tile and stone combined with our expert craftsmanship will no doubt create unforgettable outdoor moments with family and friends while also enhancing the beauty and value of your home. Call us today. Floors and Beyond brings you the locker room each and every day. 
Ted's Floors and Beyond has all your flooring needs, whether it's hardwood, laminate, carpet, tile, luxury vinyl. They have it for you right there at Ted's. You can go by their showroom there in Anniston. You can pick out what you like, want, and need, and they can do that there at Ted's. Also, they've got their partnership with Welburn Cabinet and will offer you a complete kitchen or bath makeover. That includes cabinets, countertops, flooring, backsplashes, tile showers. They can get it done there at Ted's Floors and Beyond. And now they offer you work on your outdoor space, whether it's an outdoor kitchen, patio, or living space. They have specially made outdoor tiles and stones that can enhance your outdoor experience. Go by and see them today at their showroom in Anniston on Highway 431, right before you get to Sachs Elementary School, or visit them online at shopteds.com. At shopteds.com, Ted's Floors and Beyond brings you the locker room. We continue on on this Monday afternoon on the locker room presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. I'm Namath Pitts. Before the break, we gave you guys the results from the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament. But now we have highlights for you guys from the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament. And those highlights are presented by Lindsey Barger of Really Real Real Estate. I'd love to tell you more about Lindsey Barger of Really Real Real Estate. And i got to ask you guys, are you ready to buy or sell? Because together with Lindsay Barger, we can help make your home dreams a reality. She specializes in home buying, selling, and investing. Whether you want to buy a personal home, whether you want to buy a dream home, whether you want to buy land to build a home, whether you want to buy a home just to flip and resell, whatever it is, Lindsay Barger is your friend through it all. So today you can call her at 256-441-2389, and I know she would love to take care of your real estate needs. You can also find her on Facebook and Instagram at lindsaybarger.com. Realtor. So we continue on on this Monday afternoon. Again, we were at Piedmont Friday night for the opening round of the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament, and we have the highlights. So let's go out to Piedmont Gymnasium. And boy, was it hot there. We start our action with Tanner Gerald of White Plains and Johnny Mack English of Ramburn. Tanner Gerald looking for the back points, and Tanner Gerald of White Plains on top. Tanner Gerald of White Plains would end up being the winner over Johnny Mac English, but they get the action started for East Alabama now at Piedmont. So there it is, Tanner Gerald and Johnny Mac English. Here we have Gabriel Snyder of Weaver and Jonathan Richards of New Hope. Gabriel Snyder gets the two takedown now on top, looking for the turn on Jonathan Richards of New Hope. Gabriel Snyder's been a very uh, good surprise for White, uh, for Weaver this year, scored a lot of points for him. Part of that team that won the Dulles Championship, looking to win a traditional championship next month. Here's Bryson Pugh of Prattville Christian Academy versus Harrison Vaughn of Montgomery Catholic. And I'm sure these two are familiar with each other, Prattville Christian Academy and Montgomery Catholic. Not too far from each other. I'm sure they wrestle each other very often throughout the season. Bryson Pugh looking for the pin right now. On top of Harrison Vaughn, Jackson Hurst is the official. Yeah, good, good, good set of uh, East Alabama officials there this weekend. Jackson Hurst, Troy Patterson, and Christian, uh, Mel- not Christian Melendez, that's the wrestler for Piedmont. I apologize, Dylan Melendez, who's a former state champion. But right here, it's Bryson Pugh and Harrison Vaughn. Harrison Vaughn doing a good job of fighting off of his back with Bryson Pugh. Get back in a position and get the win by pin. Here's Xander Wilson of Welburn and Jamel Saxton of Dora. Xander Wilson has also been much improved for Welburn this year. You see Ben Carroll and Dalton Carroll in the top right corner in the coach's corner for Welburn, two Carrolls. And here's Xander Wilson looking for the takedown. And he's going to get it on Saxton of Dora. Dora Saxton up quick. They're going to go out of bounds. He's still on bottom. Wilson on top. Saxton looking for the escape. Wilson's going to do a good job of returning Saxton to the mat. And this is going to be Xander Wilson who wins this match over Saxton of Dora in the first round of the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament. And I believe that's going to take us to Nathan Cox of Madison County and Miles Harris of Cherokee County. Nathan Cox on top looking for the pin. And he's got it locked in pretty deep on Miles Harris, though Harris is fighting, not going down easy. Got that elbow posted up right now, which is preventing Cox from getting the pin. But Cox is going to readjust here in the minute. And then Nathan Cox is going to end up sticking Miles Harris of Cherokee County. Here's Braden Driver of Ramburn, Ethan Hunter of New Hope. Driver shoots in, finishes two takedown for Driver. Driver on top, Ethan Hunter of New Hope on bottom. Driver now looking for the turn. And he's going to turn Ethan Hunter. Uh, Not yet. Now he's going in looking for the power half. And he's going to turn Ethan Hunter and see if he can hold it and get the pin. 
And the winner for the winner from Ramburn is going to be Braden Driver, who's going to win by pin over Ethan Hunter of New Hope. Here's Austin Mayfield of Cleburne County, Cash Ward of Ramburn. Mayfield looking to jack him up. He's going to get two takedown, take him straight to his back. And Cash Ward's going to get off his back. He's going to get some back points for Austin Mayfield. And right here, he's just going to do a little over-under throw. He's going to get two takedown, put Cash Ward on his back. He's going to get more as Austin Mayfield's going to look for the pin for Cleburne County. And arguably one of the best wrestlers in the state of Alabama, probably going to, not probably, I'm predicting he will. I've said it all season. You can go back to our live stream at Welburn. I said all season I felt like this was going to be the year that Austin Mayfield would finally crack through and get that state championship, and I think it's certainly going to happen at the 146-pound weight class. Here's Jaden Woods of Sachs, Brody Pugh of Prattville Christian Academy. And Brody Pugh looking for the takedown on Woods. Nothing yet. And there's two takedown for Pew of Prattville Christian Academy. He's now on top and looking for the turn on Jaden Woods of Sachs. Sachs, uh, not a good show in this weekend. They've struggled a little bit this year as well. Obviously, Tristan Garrett's the guy they're hoping for a opportunity to potentially win a state championship. Here's Brody Pugh, though, looking for the pin over Jaden Woods, and he gets it. Here's Bryson Rouse of Dora, J.J. Hurd of White Plains. J.J. Hurd. Looking for the takedown. He's going to get two takedown on Bryson Rouse of Dora. Now J.J. Hurd looking for the turn. Let's see if he can get it. I feel like I know the result of this one. I think he's going to get it. I could be wrong. No, I'm not. I knew he did. I'm the one that you know took this video. Anyway, J.J. Hurd of White Plains is going to get the pin as soon as Melendez calls it. There he goes. All right, pin for J.J. Hurd. Zach Presley of Welburn landing Grantham of White Plains. Grantham shoots in. Presley stuffs it to take down for Presley of Welburn. And he's going to look to throw a leg in. Not often do you two, two, see two 17-pound guys try to throw legs. But Zach Presley looking to try it against landing Grantham of White Plains. He's got both in. Looking for a power half. There's nothing there. All right, this time it's going to be Brody Vandiver of Deschler, Daniel Burns of Montgomery Catholic. We're on neutral. That's where we're at right now. Daniel Burns of Montgomery Catholic, Brody Vandiver of Deschler. Vandiver is going to shoot in. Burns is going to stuff it and get two takedown for Montgomery Catholic. Here's Logan Morrow of White Plains, Cameron Richardson of Dora. Richardson shoots in on Morrow. And he's going to finish two takedown for Cameron Richardson of Dora. He was part of the big uh, weekend for Dora that saw him win the tournament at Piedmont. Cameron Richardson looking for the turn. Nothing there. Here's Joseph Bugs of Sachs. Caden Green of Weaver. Ooh, we're a little high. I was a little scared of my camera, not going to lie. But it's going to be Bugs getting two takedown, but Green quickly gets off of his back. And then Green's even going to get an escape here in the second. He's just going to pop right back up on Bugs. You see Bugs on top. Green doing a good job. He's going to escape. One escape. Green's going to end up winning the match. This next one was an upset. Three seed Asher Waugh of New Hope. Noah Smith not seated in the top five for Welburn. And Noah Smith has come on strong here of late. You can really tell him the maturity's kicking in. The technique's starting to click. And he just puts Asher Waugh right here on his back. And Noah Smith gets a huge upset as he knocks off the number three seed, Asher Waugh of New Hope. And I got to tell you, you're about to see something here in a minute. Noah Smith should get bonus points. He made the kid tap. He made the kid tap. Bonus points, coach. He gets Coke and ice cream after practice next week. All right, here's Carter Anderson of Montgomery Catholic, Hunter Holsey of Ramburn. Carter Anderson looking for the pin. And that was a quick pin. But he got it. Carter Anderson of Montgomery Catholic. And here's Mason Hom of White Plains and Brady West of Deschler. Two takedown Mason Hom of White Plains. And Hom this time is going to stack West and get the win by pin. As that is your Lindsey Barger Really Real Real Estate highlights from the Piedmont Dog Fight Wrestling Tournament from this weekend. And so there is some of the action. We hope that you, we uh, featured your school. We tried to get most schools in those highlights. But I apologize if we did not have your school in that. We've talked wrestling all day, but we have got to take a break. When we come back, it's the final segment of the day. I know. I'm going to cry, too. We're going to talk bowling. 
high school uh, sports awards. Remember, that's a new thing coming. They announced the nominees for each sport for the fall. And then we are going to end the show in a strong way, continuing to, t- well, sad way, it's strong, but it's unfortunate news, as a tennis tournament will not be happening in Calhoun County this year. But do not go away. We'll tell you more about all of that when we come back. You're watching The Locker Room, presented by Ted's Fours and Beyond. Ted's Floors and Beyond is excited to introduce our all new outdoor living collection. Have you ever dreamed of elevating or even creating an outdoor living space? Whether it be for grilling, lounging, playing, entertaining, or just winding down, our quality tile and stone combined with our expert craftsmanship will no doubt create unforgettable outdoor moments with family and friends while also enhancing the beauty and value of your home. Call us today. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. Welcome back into the locker room. We continue on on this Monday afternoon, presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. I'm Nameth Pitts. Yes, that's me. I'm right here. I know a lot of you, you ask me when you see me out at wrestling tournaments, basketball, are you Nameth? No, that's my clone. No, yes, I'm Nameth. I'm himself. And I'm reminding you for the second time today, because I remind you every single day to like and follow our East Alabama Now page so you don't miss the locker room, guys. And please share. We're not getting enough shares on this thing. Like, if you watch it, you're supposed to hit share. So if I see 459 views, I expect 459 shares. All right, good. I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And so you do that for me. Hit that like and follow button. We'll continue to get this thing spread across the state of Alabama. Hey, also, don't forget about EAN News tonight at 6.30 p.m. Mike Stedham, very smart, by the way. Him and Katie Edwards, genius. They bring you your local news, and boy, do we got a story for you today. It involves Walmart and a shooting. That's all I'm going to say. And then John Holder has your local weather. What street he's on tonight, that I don't know. I always look forward to finding out. But then I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the Piedmont Dogfight Wrestling Tournament that we talked about earlier and preview all of the basketball games for the night ahead. But right now we're going to shift into something that I love to do. Okay, and I did not even know that this was a sport for Alabama High School Athletic Associations for a while until about two years ago. But one of my favorite things to do if you got a weekend and you're free, get the family together, get some friends together, and I love two things. I love going to play golf at Top Golf, but I really love going bowling. And actually, one of my hidden talents is that I can shoot the gutter ball unlike anybody else. I mean, it's it's a talent at this point. But no, I'm a pretty good bowler. I'm pretty good. I can shoot um, probably in the 140s, which is I think solid compared to most people. Um, that's on you know being on a good game. But I love bowling, and there was three local teams right here close to us in East Alabama that have qualified for the state bowling tournament. Now, am I going to be at the state bowling tournament? Well, I asked my boss, and he gladly declined. So I will not be at the state bowling tournament. But we're going to talk about those three teams that made it to the state bowling tournament. By the way, that was a joke. 
My boss did not decline. He actually said, if you want to go to Mobile, go ahead. But the Etowah Blue Devils and Gadsden City Boys, along with the Southside Girls, have earned berths in the Alabama High School Athletic Association State Bowling Tournament after they had solid showings at the North Regionals at Trustville Spare Time Bowling Center. By the way, I've bowled at Spare Time before. One of my high scores I've ever bowled was actually at Spare Time. Unfortunately, we didn't have bowling when I was in high school, or I'd have probably been at the state tournament. But not important. It's not about me. It's about the Etowah Blue Devils, the Gadsden City Boys, and the Southside Girls. As a result of reaching the semifinal rounds, the three teams advanced to the state tournament that takes place this Thursday and Friday at the Bolero Bowling Center in Mobile, Alabama. That's South Alabama. Now, seated in last place following the traditional play back on January 18th, the Class 1A through 5A defending state champions, Etowah, who's 10-2 on the season, rallied from a 3-0 deficit to defeat number one seed Southside 4-3 in the quarterfinals of what was a best-of-seven Baker format on Thursday of this past week. Now, the Panthers of Southside Gaston finished uh, with more pins, 1,218 to 1,141, rolling games of 219 to 210 in rounds two and three. However, Southside struggled in the final four games, losing the final round 200 to 162. Etowah then fell to East Limestone 3-1, to one, by a score of 687 to 679 in the best of five Baker format semifinals. But instead of folding their tent with their season on the brinks, the Etowah Blue Devils maintained their focus and patiently waited for an opportunity to gain some momentum. EJ Till split in game four was the turning point in the match. The mental toughness of the state champions carried over into this season as they continue their season. As the fourth seed in Class 6A and 7A, the Gaston City Titans, who are 11-3 on the season, opened championship play with a 4-2 victory over American Christian Academy out of Tuscaloosa before falling to eventual regional champ Hewitt Trussell 3-2 in the semifinals. This will be Gaston City's first trip to the state tournament in three years. And then in the Class 1A through 5A girls bracket, Southside 24-4 swept corner in the quarterfinals before coming up short to Scottsboro in the semifinals. Gas and City lost to Sparkman 4-1 in the first round of championship play. Now, in the traditional format seeding play, the Southside boys finished first and the girls runner-up in Class 1A through 5A. The Panthers bowled a score of 2,300 or 2,000. 834. They had a, that was 150 pins better than John Carroll uh, Catholic. And Morgan rolled a 637 series to edge Scottsboro's Dylan Chastain by two pins. The Lady Panthers scored 2,181, which was 51 pins behind East Limestone. And then Gaston City came in fourth overall with a score of 2,508. Howard finished with a 659 score to finish second in individual play. But we told you guys about the Alabama High School Sports Award, which is proud to announce the nominees. Well, I'm proud to announce the nominees for each fall sport that was played in the state of Alabama. The winners will be announced during the live show, which will take place on May 29th at the Montgomery Performing Arts Center. The Alabama High School Sports Award is one of 22 regional shows across the United States. It's a nine-month student athlete recognition program that will have a red carpet show for teams of all different sports throughout the season, fall and spring and winter. The show will recognize athletes, coaches, and teams across the state of Alabama, uh, the state of Alabama who have played AHSA and AISA. During the live shows, these uh, nominees will be honored, along with the player of the year for each of the winter and spring sports. The awards showcase will also feature premier awards for both on and off the field accomplishment for student athletes, coaches, and teams. It includes a Courage Award of the Year. It includes a Coach of the Year, a Team of the Year, the Boys and Girls Athlete of the Year, and also one school from the state will receive a $1,000 donation to its school's athletic department. So, can we get a drum roll, please? No, we cannot, but I'll go ahead and give you guys the nominees for each sport from the fall. Let's start with boys cross country. The nominees for the boys cross country are Braden Area of American Christian Academy, Matthew Blake of Trinity Presbyterian. Here's a local guy, Evan Christopher of Southside Gadsden High School, Ethan Edgeworth of Cold Springs. Here's another local guy, Dakota Franks or Dakota Frank of Montford High School. 
Arthur Langley of John Carroll Catholic, Eric Moore of Huntsville, Charles Perry of UMS Wright Preparatory School, William Poor of McGill Tullin Catholic School, Joe or John Shoemaker of Oak Mountain, Henry Strand of Estavia Hills, and Angeline Young of Northridge. That is your nominees for the boys cross country. Nominees for the girls cross country. We have Peyton Battles of West End High School right here in just north of us in Gadsden. Avery Cahoon of Hewitt Trustful, Ty Kaysen of Chelsea, Navea Evans of Pisgah, Ellie Goff of uh, St. James High School, Katherine Johnson of Athens High School, Karis Kelly of American Christian Academy, Emma Brook of Levering Homewood High School, Mary Catherine of Malone Mountain Brook High School, Abby Murner of Auburn High School, Mary Gace, uh, Grace of Parker Briarwood Christian School, and Sarah Tolt of Auburn High School. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. We have one of the best cross-country runners in the state of Alabama right here in Calhoun County at White Plains High School. And the fact that she, who's been as dominant as anybody from White Plains, Madison Kahn, the fact that Madison Kahn is not on this list after she's already won like four state championships, going for another this spring, like the fact that she's not on this list is robbery. I'm just going to be honest. The fact that Madison Kahn is not on this list is robbery. Flag football. Here we go. Nominees for Flag Football Player of the Year. Ian Cobb of Montgomery Catholic. Jale Dixon of Montgomery Catholic. Caden Dooley of Valley High School. Jarrett Griggs of Central Phoenix City. Yasmine Holmes of Booker T. Washington. Natalyn Lumpkin of Central Phoenix High School. Lanaya Page of Prattville Christian Academy. Lily Powers of Gaston City High School. River Riley of Estavia Hills. Jakiria Ringstaff of Winona. Anna Russo of Montgomery Catholic, and Ryan Scott of Sipsey Valley. Nominees for the Defensive Football Player of the Year, T.J. Banks of Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, Jeremiah Beeman of Parker, Malik Blockton of Pike Road, Sterling Dixon of Spanish Fort High School, Anquan Fagans of Thompson, uh, Dre Kirkpatrick of Gaston City, Rodarius Morgan of Central Phoenix City, Joseph Phillips of Booker T. Washington, Demarcus Reddick of Chilton County, Jordan Ross of Estavia Hills, Ronnie Royal of Gulf Shores, and Bradley Shaw of Hoover. Nominees for the Offensive Player of the Year, Logan Anderson of Fife High School, Fluff Bothwell of Aniana, Cam Coleman of Central Phoenix City, Jacob Cornejo of Cherokee County, Alvin Henderson of Elba, K.J. Jackson of St. James, Preston Lancaster of Tuscaloosa Academy, Jalen Mbakwe of Clay Chalkville, Kayla McCreary of Montgomery Catholic, Kevin Riley of Tuscaloosa County, Perry Thompson of, of Foley High School, and Ryan Williams of Saraland. Then for swimming, boys and diving, Chip Andrews of McGill Tulin, Luke Bedsall of Huntsville, Josiah Blankenship of Northside, Jonathan Giddens of Boaz, kind of local, Will Neville of Whitesburg Christian, and Ari Azrat of Estavia Hills. Nominees for the girls, swimming, Lena Amari of Fairhope, Sarah Bush of Opelika, Samantha Chan of Bob Jones, Reagan Costello of St. Paul's, Alexandria Morgan of Chelsea, and Macy Stewart of Tallahassee. We don't have any swimming people that made nominees, um, but we do have some volleyball players, which is the final fall sport nomination, and it starts with Ace Austin of Spring Garden High School. And then Ava Boyle of Lawrence County, Amelia Edgeworth of Orange Beach, Noel Freeman of UMS Wright, Elise Fulgham of Northridge, Melanie Haynes of Mobile Christian, Isabella Hill of Trinity Presbyterian, Paris McCurder of McGill Tulin, Hannah Parrott. These are some hard names, guys, of Mountain Brook. I would hate to be the person that has to announce the winner. Allie Price of Plainview, Blakely Robbins of Bayside Academy, Bailey Rogers of Prattville Christian Academy, and here's a local one from Pleasant Valley High School, Maddie Schwabe of Pleasant Valley High School, Mariah Schwartz of Montgomery Academy, Ryland St. Clair of San Rock, Kendi Vaughn of Bob Jones, Audrey Valgoth of Vesavia Hills, and Addie Vincent of Montgomery Academy. That is your High School Sports Awards of Alabama. And we're going to close the show by talking about what's typically the Calhoun County Tennis Tournament, but it is now no tennis tournament. And what do you mean? Well, I mean the Red Wilder Tennis Tournament for this year has been canceled. The Red Wilder High School Tennis Tournament will not be held this year because of a lack of teams. In an email to Calhoun County Tennis Coaches, tournament organizer Jay Walker confirmed that there are not enough teams for this year's tournament. A year ago, boys and girls team from Faith Christian, Oxford, Donahoe, Jacksville, and Pleasant Valley participated. 
But this year, Faith Christian and Pleasant Valley are not fielding tennis teams. And Jacksonville does not have a boys team. Walker said in the email that there will be a, another attempt next year to have a tournament. Last year, Donahoe Girls won the Red Wilder Tennis Tournament for the eighth straight year. And in the boys tournament, Faith Christian repeated as champions. But there will be no Red Wilder Tournament this year as it has been canceled. Well, what hasn't been canceled is the locker room. And we'll be back tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. I hope you'll come back to join us. I'm Namath Pitts, and thank you for watching The Locker Room, presented by Ted's Fours and Beyond.